Church, say amen. amen. Come on, the church, say amen one more time. How many know God is an awesome God? How many know He's worthy to be praised? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. How many know He's worthy to be praised? In the midnight hour, how many know He's worthy to be praised? With the sickness in my body, how many know He's worthy to be praised? When I can't see my way, how many know he's worthy to be praised? When I don't know how to make it, how many know he's worthy to be praised? Yeah, there are some folks here, I know that this is the first, last Sunday of the year, but if you look back from January, I guarantee you that there are some folks sitting in the house that you still owe God praise. Pray for your pastor, that 
God will restore his voice. Amen. Amen. Now I have to tell you, I'll be honest with you, uh, this may sound not too happy for you all, but I'm grateful his voice is where it is today. <laughs> because I was praying this morning, Lord, where am I going to go to church? Uh, last night, and so when he texted me and asked me, could he could he, could I preach? Uh, I, I am a Alabama fan, and I'd already shouted in the hotel room time after our victory, but when I saw the text come through, and he said, can you preach this morning? I was in the hotel, I said, look at God. <laughs> so I, I was praising him in the hotel, high-fiving myself, getting, some of you all don't know about that. I was high-fiving myself, getting, Get my praise on and just tell the God thank you because he knows how to make a way. Amen? Yeah. All right, the Gospel of St. Mark, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse, and it reads, <clears throat> Now, the next day, when they had come out of, from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. The 20th verse, if you will. <clears throat> now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse." has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just for a little while, my brothers and sisters, can we preach from the subject by asking you a question. Has your mountain moved? Has your mountain moved? If you don't mind, if you would permit me just for a minute, and if you would do me a favor, tap it to your neighbor on the shoulder and tell the neighbor, neighbor. Speak, to your mountain. speak to your mountain. My brothers and sisters, as we look at the state of our union today, as we look at our nation, our local government, as we take a look at who is or who is not in the president's seat, we can say with assurance that we all stand in the need of prayer. I don't know about you, don't know your background, where you come from, your social plight, uh, your epidemic and your needs, or whatever it may be, but I can tell you, we all stand in the need of prayer. And today, my brothers and sisters, turn on your TV and you'll find out that everywhere we look, there seems to be problems on every hand. There seems to be problems to the left, to the right, in front and back, but I know a God who is a problem solved. Today, my brothers and sisters, each of us have had our own share of problems. We've all had our own mountains to climb. Each of us have all had our own valley lows. Each of us have all, who here among us have not tasted the taste that sorrow can bring into one's life? We've all had our share of problems and the right Maybe today you don't understand what I'm saying when I ask you the question, have your mountain moved? But let me just tell you, mountains uh, signify those things in our life that are impossible to get over. They're impossible to get around. You, you can't climb them. You can't dig up under them. And, and, and matter of fact, I know that back in the old days we used to sing songs like, God, don't move a mountain, but give me the strength to climb. But I'm here to tell you that that was never God ever cause you to climb a mountain is because he's going to be at the top where to meet you. God is signifying today that all of us have had our set of problems. Now you 
between speaking to your mountain and speaking about your situation. Too many of us have learned in our lives how to talk about our problems, how to talk about our mountains, how to talk about our situations when the Bible Tell it like 
like it is. Uh, there are a lot of folk that has faith in Buddha and Confucius and Muhammad, but the last time I checked, Buddha still dead, Confucius still dead, Muhammad still dead, but the Bible said that Jesus is the only one that got up out of the grave, ascended into the Father. Matter of fact, before he ascended, the Bible said he descended and led captivity captive. So, so if you follow him, Buddha. Oh, my brother. 
brothers and sisters, I have to, under, number one, understand that when I speak to that mountain, I have to understand. I have to have faith in God. Do you remember when the spies were sent out in Canaan? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what really happened? Yeah. Do you remember when, when Caleb and them steal the people and prayed before Moses and they went out into the promised land when they went over to Canaan? And remember when they came back and you remember what they said? They said, listen, you know, we know what you sent us to do, but we look like grasshoppers. We, we look like grasshoppers in the sight of these folk that are over there. Can I tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, that if you're going to see your mountain move, you got to you gotta have a metanoia. Huh. A, a metanoia simply means this, that your mind has to transform your thinking from where it's at to where God wants it to be. And when you have a metanoia, what you'll say is, wait a minute, I'm not a grasshopper. Why, why am I not a grasshopper? Because my God sent me to conquer this, so I got to defeat every grasshopper mentality. I got to stop saying I can't, and I got to begin to say I can. I got to stop saying we won't, and I got to begin to say we will. Why? Because we are not grasshoppers. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a grasshopper. <laughs> Secondly, my brothers and sisters, I have to ask you, has your mountain moved? We have to be encouraged today. We have to understand that we're spending too much time measuring our problems. Too much time measuring our mountains. Too much time talking about it. Too much time crying about it. The first Sunday that I came here to worship with you all, that was a sister that stood up. And as God was bringing this back to my remembrance last night as I was preparing, as that was a sister that stood up. And the sister came over on this side, didn't know who the sister was. But the sister stood up and when she stood there, she said, listen, she got happy really. When I get happy, I'm not a happy person that's going to stand up and do a two-step. That was my clubbing days. When I get happy now, you begin to see tears flow from my eyes. And I'm holding up my hand telling God, thank you. And the sister stood up on the side and she said, you know what? I had cancer. I went through radiation. She said, but God has healed me from it. And baby, when she said heal me from it, it was like God turned on the water fountain. Tears began to flow from my eyes. I was over here clapping my feet, clapping my hand, telling God, won't he do it? And then before the service was over with, there was a young brother came up who said, you know what, I've been on drugs, but baby, I want to change. And once again, I was clapping my hands, clapping my feet, telling God, God, I see that you are able to do exceedingly and abundant above all. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, if our mountains are going to move, not only must we know that God is greater than our mountain, but number two, we got to understand the purpose of our faith. There are a lot of folk that I hear in quoting Hebrews 11 and 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for the other. This is not seen, it's not seen. I, I know we know the quote, but do you know the application? So you got to understand that your faith is there to remove mountains. That, that's the purpose of your faith, to remove mountains. You, you don't believe it, you got to understand that, that mountains represent the immovable, the impossible. It's something too big for us to handle. But, but if we turn it over to God, we know that God is the purpose, and he's our source, and that the purpose of our faith is to remove God, then we'll learn that God is Emmanuel. What do you mean, Pastor? He with you, baby. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you learn that God is with you. We look at that. Do you remember the walls of Jericho? You remember what happened there? When Joshua went down to the walls of Jericho, you remember that God gave him a plan that seemed crazy? Yeah. It was God that orchestrated the plan. It was God that gave him the plan. God said, listen, Joshua, all I want you to do is go down. I don't even want you to fight about it. He said, listen, all I need you to do is go down and tell the folk keep quiet. Yeah. That was a hard plan for us. Yeah. He said, go down, tell the folk keep quiet, march around that thing six days, and on the seventh day, march seven consecutive times, and then at that last time, something the folk ain't going to be used to, I want you to shout. Yeah. Plan that seemed crazy. Plan that didn't seem logical. You mean to tell me you don't want me to put my military men in front? You don't want me to put the fighters ahead of everybody else? No. He said, all I want you to do is march. I, I don't want you to take any tools, which I, all I want you to do is march. That's only one tool you're going to need for this, and that's going to be the tool of your voice. He said, but you're going to need your faith to make it happen. So when they marched around that thing, they was going around, and can you imagine today getting everybody to start Bethlehem, that you begin to focus on one problem, one mouth, and you come into Bethlehem, and all you begin to do is march. You march around that thing. You ain't saying nothing about it. You ain't mentioning it. You ain't talking about it. You just marching around it, and the pastor's told you, hush, don't nobody say nothing. And you just marching around that day, and then when you get to that seventh time, pastor sign the law, and he said, all right, I need everybody to shout. Now, a lot of us hollering the house, hollering the ball game, hollering the club, but can I get by from the holiday church? Go and shout like you love God. Tell God, holler like you love God. And God said, I'll make 
be some shouts in your life. What was the last thing you shouted about? And listen, I, I don't mean shout when you got to tap your feet and all that. I, I don't mean that type of shout because when I pastor, when folks shout and folks come to get them, I said, let them go. <laughs> and one of the deacons asked me, he said, Pastor, why you said let them go? They might hurt themselves. I said, well, baby, if they hurt themselves, they ain't God. I said, let them go. Let them bounce off everything they can bounce off of. They bust their head wide open, they ain't God. Because how many know God is not a foolish God? God, God don't get in foolish. See, see, God knows how to pick people up. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So we got to understand that there are some things in our life we ought to be shouting about. Your child made in, that's a shout. Your child graduated, that's a shout. The doctor's report, that's a shout. Money in the bank, that's a shout. Got a job, that's a shout. Got a husband, wife, that's a shout. The Bible said you were here, that's a shout. You're not where you want to be, but thank God. I bore you too long. If our mouth is going to move, we have to expect it to happen. Verse 24 tells us we got to expect God to move. It baffles my mind how people come in church Sunday after Sunday and never expect God to do anything. Don't expect God to answer a prayer. Don't expect God to change their life. Don't expect God to move in the service. Don't expect God to move in the community. And yet we come in and we sing half-heartedly. Pray half-heartedly. Why? Because we don't expect God to do it. But I guarantee you when the Powerball get up, there's some fervent prayers going out. Now Jesus... Say 
2 in the morning. I remember going in the corner and I was trying to make a deal with the Lord. I said, Lord, if you let my daddy do it, I'll straighten up. And just like I'm talking to you, a voice came in my spirit and said, you can't make deals with yourself. I remember crying myself to sleep. And when I remember waking up, I was thinking that my dad was gone. Because the doctor said, my dad wasn't going to make it. But as I woke up, I heard an alarm go off. I saw people running everywhere. My mind was, it must be my dad's room. Because my dad's not going to make it. It was my dad's room. But when they got in his room, Lo and behold, he had pulled out every tube. Pulled the tubes out of his nose, pulled the tubes out of his side. The doctor ran in and told him, said, Brother Harden, what you doing? He said, son, he said, I had a vision last night. He said, I saw two hands. And he said, one hand was dark and the other hand was light. And he said, a voice told me, if you take this hand, everything's going to be all right. And he said, I took that hand and I felt something go through my body. They, they, they rushed him down and they began to do x-rays and, and that mask that he had on the inside that they couldn't operate on, the doctor came back and said, the mask is gone and baby, you can't tell me that God can't move mountains. You can't tell me. I see it firsthand. I, I know God is a mountain mover. I know God is able to shake and make some things. What, why am I giving you an example? Because somebody needs to know one and we're going to open the doors of the church because somebody here couldn't relate to that. But let, let me tell you, I was pastoring Bethel Baptist Church and running the church going to lead. And I tell you, I've got pulled over by more officers than I can shake a stick at. My youngest daughter was sitting in the back seat. Both daughters was in the back seat and got pulled over by a state trooper. And the state trooper came up and he was, he was really kind of mean, seemed like and license and registration. I said, here you go, officer. And I was trying to tell him, I was trying to get the church. He said, that's okay. My daughter said something that ran all through my spirit. My youngest daughter said, Daddy, your God ain't going to get you out of this ticket. <laughs> <laughs> when she said it, it angered me. It angered me. Not that I was angry at her, but I was preaching and teaching and she had missed it. So when she said that, man, I turned my face to the wall. I started to talk to God like I never have before. And I said, God, I don't want you to get me out of this ticket for me. I want you to do it for my child sitting in the back seat. She need to know that you're an awesome God and that you answer prayer. And, and, and can I tell you what happened? The state trooper was coming to the car. He stopped, turned around, and went back to his car. Stayed in his car, and when he came back, he said, I had wrote you a ticket. He said, but something told me you needed a second chance. Oh, you wouldn't have done but grace and mercy. Can I tell you, I told my daughter, look at God. Can I tell you my God is able? I don't know what you're battling with. I don't know what you're fighting with. But I got a brother who's been on drugs and he's drug free. I got a brother who used to be a homosexual and he ain't a homosexual no more. Baby, I can tell you from a family what God is able to do. So this morning, can I have somebody here that you really been wanting God to answer a prayer? That you really been wanting to seek a breakthrough? That you are really saying in your spirit, God, I'm tired. I don't even want you to come forward. All I want you to do is hold your hand up. Well, we can see you. Hold your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we can see you because can I tell you something? God is telling you right now. He said, listen. He said, I'll do it for you if you believe me. He said, if you will believe me, I'll do it for you. And some of you need to stand in the gap right now for somebody else. Some of you need to stand in the gap for somebody else. Maybe it ain't you, but somebody else need that breakthrough. Father, Father God, I don't come for any shape, form, or fashion. Father God, it's not by happenstance that you are telling us today that you are mountain moving. Father God, it's not by happenstance that people have raised their hand 
all over this sanctuary. Father, I'm asking you to move. Lord God, I've I learned, God, that I don't have to beg you to move. I just have to believe that you will move. So, Father God, I'm speaking to their situation. I'm speaking to that sickness. I'm speaking to that lack. I'm speaking to that poverty. I'm speaking to that relationship. I'm speaking to that child. I'm speaking to that daughter. I'm speaking to that job. I'm speaking to that house. I'm speaking to that automobile. I'm speaking to that mindset. I'm speaking to that depression. I'm speaking to the one who's been abused. I'm speaking to the one who's on drugs. I'm speaking to the one who's the black sheep. I'm speaking to the one that don't know how to stop. I'm speaking to them right now. And Father God, all I'm going to say so that they'll know how to 